Did I just kill hundreds of whales? That's the question I'm asking myself deep inside the Southern Ocean whale sanctuary off Antarctica. In an ancient world of ice, Mother Nature is front and centre and the most spectacular show on Earth. Icebergs the size of cities, penguins resting on the smaller ones, while family groups of orcas storm through like the wolves of the sea. And everywhere I look, I see whales, minkies, fin, humpback, blue whales. But every hour that we are not on the poachers, whales are being killed with explosive-tipped harpoons sending shrapnel through their bodies. It's 2008 and I'm standing on the bridge of Sea Shepherd's mighty Steve Irwin vessel. And every ounce of my being tells me we're heading in a direction away from where the poachers are. Yet somehow I've managed to convince Paul Watson, the captain of our ship, where I believe the whaling fleet is. But what if I'm wrong? Hundreds of minkies, fin and humpback whales will die. And I would have failed all the good people around the world that have got us to this place at this time. Unlike the strength of an ecosystem relies on diversity, so too does our movement to save the oceans. Well, the diversity of support of people and companies from all over the world. Sea Shepherd's Antarctic wild defence campaigns for over a decade have relentlessly defended and saved the lives of over 6,000 whales. And when the whalers took a one-year hiatus because the International Court of Justice found their whaling program to be illegal, this gave us an opportunity to look at another poaching problem in the Antarctic namely the illegal fishing of Patagonian and Antarctic toothfish, otherwise known as Chilean sea bass or white gold because of the prices they fetch around the world. But they're an apex predator of the deep in the Southern Ocean, critical to the health of their marine environment. We set out to find the most notorious toothfish poacher in the world, the thunder, and that finding the thunder would mark the start of the world's longest maritime pursuit. A chase that would go for 110 days at sea, through three oceans and 11,000 nautical miles. And one of the legal toothfish companies is Austral Fisheries. And when I first met David Carter, the CEO of Austral, there were perceptions on both sides. David thought we were a bunch of cowboys, tactics designed for media, and we would not only be targeting the illegal boats, but also the legal ones. Whereas we thought that companies like Austral didn't really care much about the impacts they had on the marine environment or broader global conservation issues. However, because of our curious natures and willingness to explore, we met. I came to find that Austral had done extensive work over the years in working with the Australian government to tackle toothfish poachers on their own. Where at one point there was as many illegal boats as legal ones. And by chance, an Austral ship joined our 110 day hot pursuit of the Thunder. So one day the captain of the Thunder found two conservation ships and an industry ship hot on his heels. Now, it's nothing unique for Sea Shepherd to be chasing poachers on the high sea, but an industry ship, that's unique. And that sent a very powerful message around the world. We also found that Austral were taking their company carbon neutral. And they saw the same key threats to the oceans as we did. Illegal fishing, plastics and climate. In essence, we saw the same enemy and more. So much so that they offered to fund a campaign for our volunteers to go right up to the top of Australia, to North East Arnhem Land, to work with the Dimaru Aboriginal Corporation, where our volunteers worked tirelessly and proudly, cleaning up sacred country and critical sea turtle nesting habitat, a place called Julpan, where we removed tons of marine debris and fishing nets. However, for some of our supporters, Taking money from a fishing company was wrong, even if it led to a good outcome. There was a petition calling for the money to be returned, and for my immediate resignation, a board member resigned, and it was a difficult time for me personally. However, I knew in my heart that we had to work together 
to tackle the common threats the natural world and by default we face. And this wasn't the last time I'd find myself with unlikely bedfellows. David also invited me to speak with him at the Western Australian State Liberal Conference. <laughs> and with our political support, typically from the left, and with the Liberal Party coming from the right, you can imagine the reception was a little chilly. David spoke about our collective works over the years tackling illegal toothfish poaching in the Southern Ocean. And I spoke about how the Thunder Chase led to our numerous government partnerships in Africa, where Sea Shepherd provides the ships, the crew, the fuel, and our government partners provide the armed authority on our ships to make the arrests, restoring the livelihoods of artisanal fishermen. From a somewhat icy reception, we got best presentation from today. So blown away by the work you guys do. I know that it was this bringing down of perceptions and barriers and sharing of information about our work tackling illegal fishing, working with Indigenous rangers, providing information to Interpol, cleaning up our beaches, working with government scientists in the Great Australian Bight, that this was a big catalyst for Sea Shepherd finally getting our deductible gift recipient status, charity status, in Australia. If I hadn't gone on a limb and reached out to and got to know people that perhaps I may have avoided, we'd be worse off as an organisation, and so too would our oceans. I often find that we like to put labels on ourselves, an activist, a greenie, a vegan, a conservative. We often take on those labels and it becomes our identity, who we are. But we run the risk of closing ourselves off. And that's a dangerous place to be, where we need to have open minds and we need to work together. Because I find when you strip it all back and leave those labels at the door, there's more that unites us than divides us. We are simply human and we have basic needs to survive. You know, in previous wars, we didn't have the luxury of whether we'd fight alongside this person or that person. We came together to fight against the common enemy. This time, humanity faces a threat like no other that'll make all the world's wars in the past seem insignificant compared to what is coming down the line if we do not tackle the climate emergency now that it's at hand. And this isn't a finger-pointing exercise. We've all been part of the problem. So let's come together and be part of the solution, ensuring that no one is left behind. Because change is opportunity in disguise. So back to 2008 on board the Steve Irwin vessel Antarctica. What if I was wrong? Well, Captain Paul Watson changed our course. And I stood there at the, at the radar screen with great anxiety thinking, what if I was wrong? All the people that had got us to this place at this time in defence of the whales. We carefully picked our way through the ice, navigated through the fog, until we had harpoon kill ships on the radar, acting as decoys, trying to take us away from our position. I told Paul Watson where I believed the factory whaling ship to be again. And we continued on our pursuit until we had a much larger target on the radar. And after hours of hot pursuit, I can still remember looking out to the horizon and in and out of the fog, this formidable structure become realised of the 8,000 tonne whale slaughterhouse Nishin Maru. We had our prize, and at that point, whaling was shut down for the Antarctic summer, and over 500 whales were saved. I can still remember the text I got from my mum and dad. 500 whales coming up the coast this year because we acted. The Southern Ocean Whale Century is in fact a century now for the whales because we acted. And that same love of the natural world still flows through every inch of my being. But I know that in working with Indigenous communities and people, which has been such a privilege, and working with governments and at times industry, that we are more effective today than we've ever been in providing real and tangible outcomes for our oceans. You know, this journey has been inspiring. I've seen the breaking down of perceptions and barriers, the commonalities that we all share. 
And from despair has come hope. But there is no hope without action. We may have been labelled as radical over the years. But to know where our planet is headed and do nothing, that is radical. We, we're the conservative ones. I truly believe that a person sees in the world what they carry in their hearts. And I have to believe that humanity is better than this. We have such love, passion, creativity, intelligence, the human spirit. I know that we can be better caretakers of this planet. We have to be. We don't have a choice. We need to work with and listen to our indigenous peoples all over the world. They hold the wisdom and the knowledge to lead us out of this mess. We only need to ask them, for they are ready. You know, when we bring our children into this world and they have us wrapped around their little finger in a second, yet the basic things that our kids need, clean air, water, food, a livable climate and love. These, these are the things that connect us, that link us across this beautiful planet, our home. You know, I took a leap of faith and a bit of a risk to propose working with a fishing company. But a stretch of coast, Julpan, up in northeast Arnhem Land, sacred country to the Yongle people, and critical sea turtle nesting habitat, has had over 20 tonnes of marine debris and fishing nets removed because indigenous rangers, sea shepherd, and a fishing company came together. I ask you all to take a leap of faith, to strip it all back to what's really important as we tackle this climate emergency together. Because losing this one is not an option. Because if we lose this one, we all lose. I'll leave you with the words of the Yongle people from Arnhem Land. Ilimujakak, bookmark, wangu. All of us work together and look after country. Thank you.